Okay, so this is how my day's going so far. Not bad, I got the log splitter all put back together. Problem is, Connor took my truck downtown to get some lunch and he took off my gas. So in the meantime, I dragged this generator into the barn. Now I gotta find out about this thing. XG 10,000E, about a $2,500, $3,000 generator, but this one's got 3,731.6 hours. Uh, if you Google this, they'll tell you the average life expectancy is 3,000 hours. Oil now, <laughs> change oil now. Well, plugs, change plugs now too, huh? So I don't have big hopes, but I've seen things go well over their life expectancy before, and if I can get this to run, you know, for me, for the barbecue, 10,000 watts would be plenty. And if I get it to run for just an emergency situation, it might take me another three years to get 40 hours on it, you know? So this was used in a quarry up here in Northeast PA. That's another thing that makes me think it's probably not gonna be good. I'm probably not gonna get lucky. But I wanna find out. So what's wrong with it is, as this motor spins, it makes a clunk as it spins. That doesn't sound good. I pulled the valve covers off previously. I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna tear it all apart. I'm gonna pull ahead, I'm gonna see if there's not just a chip of something laying in this piston, slapping back and forth and making it not run. We'll have to see. Uh, the fuel tank is a mess. It's just full of rust. So, if I can get it running, I'll, I'll take care of this problem. I'll, you know, I'll coat it with that fuel tank liner or something. I guess this ain't much good anymore. So my next step is to tear this thing apart and see what we're up against. If it's no good, off to the scrapyard. I got her tore down this far. I got a wrench on the back. I turn it over. I'm gonna pull this head first on the driver's side, if you will. Maybe that's the passenger side. So I'm gonna dig in, see if I can pull the head off. Hmm, not sure what I gotta do next. So I spent an hour, I got it tore down to here. Chris, look at that. What? Look at that pops out. Well, yeah, they're not, they're not like, you know. They got little teeny valves, they got little tiny rockers. Yeah. Oh, it looks like 1.5 to ones, Connor. Yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> well, the way it rolls over, it, it hits. A chunk of piston or something in there, isn't there? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to look. Which one do you think it is? I think it's this side. I'll take that one off first. So I'm gonna put, take that one off first. <laughs> what? Does that make sense to you? Here, you take it off. You're standing right there looking pretty. Here, you just, just it's 13, isn't it? Or is it 12? It's 12. So, Holy cow. The Generac, made in America, everything's metric on it. There's no way you Here, just use uh, the impact, just zap them right off. Zap, yeah, zap, zap. Now I get to feel how tight they are. I just uh, did a torque calibration in my head. What did, what'd you come to? Uh, don't forget you need Newton metrics, Newton or Newton, metrics. Newton, Newton, whatever's. Big Newtons? What do you think we're going to find in it? Oh, that's your problem. <laughs> that was a problem? There's one here, too. Is it a diesel? Jeez. Well, it puts out a lot of compression, you know. They don't want me getting to that one. You just got to it. Yeah, but they didn't want me to. Yeah. I don't think they want us to tear these apart. Oh no, are those yield bolts? Just go get some grade eights at the hardware store. I ain't doing that. What? It's a high performance engine. <laughs> it's a zero performance engine. Ah, oh, you just lost the push. Oh, see what it is? Bunch of garbage. This thing's sat. You think it's just carbon? Look at that. I never seen nothing like that. Can you get a new head gasket? Yeah, I can get new stuff. Get a new head gasket. I think this thing will run if I clean that up. And throw it back together. You might want to do the other side, clean the carbon out of it. Would you stop swearing? I'm trying to film oh, here. sorry. Carbony stuff. Yeah, stuff. Okay. It's a family, this is a family YouTube channel. This is the one place I swear. You do swear in the garage, don't you? Yeah, I'm usually alone. <laughs> Swearing at yourself? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's the only way to do it. Oh, you gonna pull that one too? Huh. I oh, I hope the heads aren't working. Look at the sequences. The exact opposite of the way I'm doing it. That pushed right up off, how come? Because there's so much junk in there. The logic is it's got 3,761 hours. 
<laughs> which is only 700 hours past the average life expectancy of one of these things. How are we gonna know which head goes where? That one goes there, and this one goes there. Huh, where'd that push rod go? It went down in the cover, didn't it? Yeah, silly. This one's got junk on it too, Con. Look. Yeah. Not Check it much. out though, no ridge. No yeah. real ridge. Nothing. This thing will run again. I think so. I think so too. So I'm gonna clean up this whole mess. I'm gonna get the numbers off it and I'm gonna order parts. Looks like I'm gonna order another push rod because I lost that one. It's not down the cover. Is it in the cover? Yeah. Can you see it? You just can't get it? You just can't reach it. You need a magnet or something. All right, we'll get it. All right, well, that's what we got. It, it's just a matter of the way it was spinning over. I knew there was something in that piston. I knew it, Connor. I knew it all along. I knew there was something in there. It's just a bunch of junk, a bunch of crap. Nope. So I found something to make it a little easier. This whole thing comes off. A couple little screws. Run Look at that. Toyota. I forgot all about that. What's that? Toyota. Bingo. Oh, now I'm right to it. Won't be so hard to put back together now. Hey guys, thank you for joining me on Tagman channel. Well, it looks like my day's kind of gone a little nutty because the old truck over here, fuel pump quit. So I got one on order, won't see that till about Tuesday. If that is the problem, who knows? Maybe, you know, I'll change the fuel pump and find out something else. But I thought while I'm here, instead of uh, lamenting over the truck and tearing it all apart yet, I'm gonna jump back on that generator I tore apart a couple weeks ago. For it, I got my gaskets, and they really added up to just nothing. Seven dollars a piece for the head gaskets. These were 67 cents. So I, I mean, it just was really cheap for that stuff. I also bought a new air cleaner element because, and this is the original. Wow. So I guess that's probably junk. Get rid of that. Now I'm just a matter of cleaning this thing up. So what I'm gonna do is clean this all up. It's, it wouldn't turn over well. I think it must have sat for a long time. Now, what bothers me about it, if it sat for a long time, why? You know what I mean? So, but I'm not gonna invest a whole lot of money and time in it, but I'm gonna clean it up. See, there's this piston here. Oops, let's see, we're laying right in the bottom. It's just dirt. Bunches of dirt in there, carbon. I cover that up so dirt wouldn't fall down in there. So I'm going to clean this up. Oh, let's see what the oil looks like. Ooh, looks good. Down to Reed's uh, generator and got the parts. They're a Generac dealer. And I was talking to Davis and I told him I had 3,600 hours on it. He said, oh, lifespan for these is 3,000 hours. And I said, oh, yep. He said, but you could probably get six. These things would run for six if they were taken care of. I said, well, it wasn't taken care of. It was used in a quarry. I don't think they ever changed the air filter. God knows if they ever changed the oil but there's no ridge. I told him that too. I said, there's no ridge on these cylinders. As dirty and clunky as these are, and it is dirty and clunky, there's no ridge. Okay, so I cleaned this off. There was some pack down there, but that's all coming off pretty easy. Oh yeah, it's coming off. This gasket looks like it's gonna come off in one piece. The inside of this motor don't look too bad. I mean, it's not like it's all full of uh, coke and carbon and all that and the oil passages. They're dirty. I mean, they're not perfectly clean, but they're not horrible either. Top of the motor's got some grunge on it. I'll get rid of that. It's Cause it's air cooled, so you want it to be as clean as you can get it so it's effectively cools. You know, just get rid of this junk. I got it sucked up pretty clean, pretty much clean enough. I don't think I got a whole lot of dirt in here. I'm gonna wipe this out with a rag. All right, so I'm going to, it feels smooth when it spins now, really smooth. I'm gonna drain the oil out. I'm gonna clean it all up and um, start putting things back together here shortly. Got a cute little hose here to drain the oil out. That's pretty handy. Let's see what kind of slime comes out of this thing. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. <gasps> Barely flowing. A little on the thick side. Doesn't smell terrible, but man, is that flowing slow. All right, so I took a little bit of brake clean. 
and I cleaned up that piston top. I only took a little tiny little spritz and then I wiped it off with a paper towel and uh, that really doesn't look too bad. I could shine a little light in there. You can see it. You can see crosshatch still in the cylinders. There's no play and the oil's still flowing. It's had to be 10 minutes by now. Well, I gotta get this head cleaned up. It's the number one head and it was the one had the most junk in it. So as I'm scraping it, this, this low land here on the head had the most stuff packed on it. I mean, look at it. It's, it's kind of even hard to push off. There it goes. I got it. I'm getting it off there. But the head underneath looks, looks pretty grunged up. A lot of junk coming out of it. Um, I'm going to clean it up good and uh, most of this stuff's coming off pretty easy. Just scraping that little light carbon off. But this is all cleaning up pretty good. That's the intake side. There's the intake port. Going into the intake valve. And then that's the exhaust valve. And that's the exhaust port. Now everything's pretty black on the exhaust side, but I think it was probably choking it down quite a bit with that filthy air cleaner element. So I'm just gonna clean this up, make sure I don't have any rough spots on it. I'll probably spray it down with some of that brake clean and knock the junk off. And then I'll, I might even test these valves, make sure they're working. And I'll just do that by putting a little bit of uh, liquid in there probably. Okay, so I just cleaned up this head. Got as clean as I think I'm gonna. There's a little staining there, carbon and whatnot. Maybe I'll scrape more of that off, but. I just uh, went ahead and poured a little bit. I used water. I poured it in there and it's uh, holding it. The valve is not, I not see any water drip out or nothing. So I'm going to drain that out and then I'm going to air clean, try the other side and then I'll use air compressed air and blow everything dry. Well, I got all the head bolts cleaned up. It's not a big deal. Just had to wire brush them off. They're all the same and I don't know which one came from where. That really doesn't matter that much, I don't think. Found my dowels, so I'm sticking them in. That one goes there. I sprayed a little bit of this, this uh, brake clean down through here and it ran out here so just to make sure there's no junk laying in there. I think I got it pretty cleaned up. Mainly all this is a cleanup or operation. Okay, so I'm going to crack out the old head gasket. So I'm going to put this on. It only goes on one way. There's no way I could put it on wrong. And there's no water jackets. So it's got it just absolutely has to go on this way. No other way. So all the bolt holes line up. My little drain hole lines up here, and that's all there is to it. 22 foot pounds of torque, or inch pounds. So multiply times 12, gives you inch pounds. That gives me 266 inch pounds. This only goes up to 250. So I'm gonna wind up using two torque wrenches because I'm gonna step torque it. So I'm gonna do 100 inch pounds, and I'm gonna do 200 inch pounds, and then we'll do the final 66 inch pounds. Taking it up to the full torque of 266. And I'll start in the center, and I'll just zigzag my way back and forth because I don't know what the torque pattern is. So we're going to kind of wing it a little bit. Dropping the bolts in, give them a little oil on the end. So I got one of the caps from the brake clean and I put a little Rotel in it. That's what I'm using to dip the bolts. That feels good. I must have cleaned the bolt holes out good. clicking but I know they're all tight beautiful okay I guess I'll do the other side look what I found on this push rod it's war here and I'm assuming it's from this guide right here I know it's cheating and it's probably a terrible idea but I'm just gonna put it upside down let it wear the other side for another 3670 hours yeah worst could happen is that'll break but I doubt it because these valve springs they're really not very springy I think it's all the way up to the top it is. There, I just bottomed it out. I just compressed that valve spring with my finger, with my thumb. These aren't, I mean, these spin 3,600 RPMs. The valves are light. The springs don't require a lot of tension. That's why all these things are small. See, I could push that down with my, with my thumb. 
So I'm gonna clean up the other one, which is also worn like crazy. You can see it. I'm gonna wipe this all down and I'm gonna put this one in upside down also. And I'm just gonna keep it as a backup for the barbecue. If it runs good, awesome. If it don't, I didn't lose much. All right, just set that right in there. That's seated into the lifter. That one must be all the way up too now. Yep, there we go. It was in the raised position, valve open position, so. Now I got it. So I got both those on. We got a throttle spring here, and that's, that's gonna be the governor spring. I, th I think if I remember right, this bolt's here. That's pretty obvious, that does. And that's the throttle spring, and that's the adjustment, if you ever have to adjust the speed. Okay, so I gotta figure out how to put that on, and that. That's the intake manifold with the carburetor. I think I gotta put this on first. So that spring is gonna pull tension on that governor. Then I gotta hook this up to the throttle shaft. I was looking at this carburetor. One of the things that makes things run bad sometimes is, is a, if it's got a worn throttle shaft. And this one does not look bad. It's got a little play there. The other end's capped, so we don't have to worry about sucking vacuum there. Maybe it'll suck a little vacuum here, but the play really isn't bad at all. So evidently it probably ran pretty steady. It didn't throttle and seek a lot. So hopefully that's gonna work out good. So that's my next thing. Gonna bolt that on, bolt that on so I can hook up the throttle cable or the throttle rod that operates the throttle on the carburetor, and then I'll continue on from there. Oh, kind of just popped in from porch building. Porch calling it a day already just because what it's like 97 degrees out goes underneath a, a one of these or something if only i'd have gotten to it in two weeks oh. instead of three yeah two weeks instead of three uh i'm sorry but all it takes is about five minutes for me to forget yeah that's preposterous today i got this thing all bolted up took me about i don't know i probably got three hours in it but i got all this bolted on Two to four thousandths is the clearance, and that's pretty tight, you know? So I gotta, I gotta get that tuned in. All I gotta do is look down the spark plug hole here. I'm gonna take my little handy dandy flashlight. I'm gonna turn the motor over until it comes up to top dead center. And I can see the piston coming up, and that's it. Just starting to come back down. Yeah, right there's the top. These are both loose now. Four thousandths, that ain't much. So let's see what happens if I put that in there. Oh man, look at all, I still got a ton of play. So that means they're way loose from what they're supposed to be. Now all I gotta do is loosen the jam nut under here. So there's a jam nut right here. Uh, open and wrench, loosen that up. Okay. Now I set this by turning this with the feeler gauge in there. Wow. Boy, I didn't have to turn it much. So now I got that set and I retighten the jam nut. Got to retighten a jam nut without letting the ball stud, which is a center bolt, turn. Okay, so I got it all tightened up again. Let's see. Let's see what it feels like. Feels really loose. I got to do that again. It ain't right. I don't trust it. I'm going to turn it to where I know it's contacting. See how it's holding the feeler gauge now on its own. Yep, it just let it go because as soon as I tighten that jam nut, it loosened everything up again. This could be an effort and frustration here. If I tighten the jam nut, I think it's picking up on that. That feels pretty good. Yep, we're gonna live with that one. Ha ha! Tighten that up just a little snugger. It goes in and out now with just a little bit of drag. That's what I want. Go to the other side. All right, came over to this side. That's tight. That one's tight at top dead center, and this one's really loose. Now, if I spin the thing over one more stroke and get it to top dead center again, right there, then they're both tight. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, I'm gonna spin it around. You can see I'm going on to the intake stroke now as, it, as the piston's going down. Coming up on compression stroke, right? Top dead center. And that's it right there. That's where I'll make my adjustments. All right, I'm getting this thing all tightened down. Whoa, let it get away from me. Let it get away from me. That thing, that ratchet. Oh, you like my ratchet, huh, Connor? Yeah, I was using that. Oh, you were using it. Figures. I should have bought two. Yeah. They're only 200 bucks a piece. Oh, good. <laughs> Without the battery. Yeah, but it's nice. It really works nice. It's the Dewalt Atomic Compact Series. 
And I don't even know why I'm advertising for DeWalt. They're not paying me nothing. I got the DCF 513. I think it's got some kind of, it's got like two speeds. It goes really fast, but then if it has to work, it, it drops a gear in here somehow. Really? Yeah, watch. Oh yeah. You do it with your hand even. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. Of course, I haven't used it yet, but you have. It's all grimy already. Oh, I used it up really good. <laughs> okay, good, at least you're getting used. He's working as Mercedes, which, uh, finding some issues, but whatever. Just, yeah. just car maintenance. I'm gonna finish tightening up all this stuff, put it together, and see if it fires up. Okay, so I figured out where these shields go. These are actually, you know, they're part of the cooling system. And they go this bolt right here, and it comes across this side over here. And there's no way to put that in. <laughs> I jumped the gun. I should have put these on before I put the intake manifold on. So, I think I want to see if this is going to run before I go through all that. So I'm going to put a new oil filter on it, fill the oil, and set up a temporary gas system. Just enough gas in there to, to fill the carburetor and see if she fires up and runs. And then I'll maybe I'll let it run long enough to see if it actually charges and, and has a generator that works. Okay, I think I got it rigged up so it'll start and run it. Took a syringe, put a bunch of gas on the gas line, going to the carburetor. I don't want a whole bunch in there, I just want it to fire up, see if it fires and runs. I got this big battery hooked up with jumpers because that battery's no good and I'm not buying a good battery if I don't know it's gonna run. So, oil check and new oil filter. I guess we're ready to give it a try. Let's see what happens. And then if it runs, I'll finish putting it together. Ooh, it spins. Ooh. Well, it runs. It sure sprung to life. Huh? Sounds a little fast, don't it? Yeah. Sounds like I got a governor spring or something hooked up wrong. Sounds very fast. It sounded scary fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> well, it runs. I wonder if maybe I got this spring wrong. I'm not sure how that went. I got something too taunt and it's pulling it too tight as far as running. They do run fast, like, but man, it seemed like I was screaming. I don't know, let's plug something in, see if the thing works. I'll just fire it up for a minute and see if it runs a drill or something. What do we got that's expendable? This is expendable. Oh, let's see what he's bringing me. Chicago electric sawzall. That's like $30. Yeah. Probably won't hurt it a bit. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. I'm so glad we got that generator going. That's pretty exciting. So part two of this is gonna be not will it run, it's gonna be will it charge. We'll see whether or not it's gonna blow up that old Sawzall or not. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.